I'm here with Brad, the brand manager for Lexus Essential West, and very exciting news, Brad. Yeah, what have we got yeah. here? Welcome, Matt. We have our uh, first ever battery electric vehicle, the UX 300E. Uh, very exciting times in the Lexus space. Yeah. Let's have a bit of a look at it. We'll look at it physically here first, and yeah. then we'll go for a bit of a spin. I'm keen to jump in and see how it goes. Yeah. So let's do the old-fashioned pop the bonnet like yeah. every rev head wants to do. You want to pop the bonnet and see what's under the bonnet. Obviously, yeah. an electric vehicle, it's a bit different when you pop, it's pop the bonnet. It's definitely a bit different, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of space under the bonnet. So it looks a bit different. I mean, some other ones, you know, uh, Tesla, for example, you see a front. You don't yeah. see anything under the bonnet there. This one's a little bit different, obviously. Any components here that people might be interested in, anything in particular? Yeah, just our, our little electric motor in here. Um, we also have our 54.3 uh, kilowatt battery, which runs underneath the vehicle. Yep. Um, 200 kilos less weight in the front of the car compared to the traditional combustion UX um, vehicle. Um, that gives us a better center of gravity for the battery system underneath. So handling differences between the combustion and the electric vehicle as well. So we can test that out, the handling differences yeah, there. We can definitely, take it and give it. definitely different, yeah. yeah. So is this two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Two-wheel drive. Right, so this is driving the front wheels like a, a normal two-wheel drive yep, modern vehicle absolutely. would do. Yeah, right, so it's got more of a traditional look to it rather yep. than some other electric vehicles, but that looks good. Now let's have a look in the boot because obviously you often find a bit more space yep. in the boot than electric do, vehicle. Yep. And obviously the batteries are all on the base of the vehicle. Yep. It's that low center of gravity. Oh yeah, so fair amount of boot space underneath here. Yeah, we the base get much? of the car drops to the floor, yep. and then we get more storage space underneath, which holds our charging cable, tire repair kit. It comes with two charging cables in the vehicle as right. standard. Okay. And vehicle, uh, sorry, tire repair kit, so yep. not a not spare tire, yep. just tire repair kit. Yep. yep. And that's obviously a modern thing that most cars yes, are doing now. Yes, for weight well. saving and, and efficiency. Yeah, right. Right, uh, we'll go along, we'll talk about some specs when we go for a bit of a drive, but yep. let's go for a spin and see how we go. And as with all Lexus vehicles, looks nice, they've got a good look to them, the modern grille looks fantastic on them, so, you know, Lexus have always had very nice vehicles, so yeah. I, I think that'll appeal to a lot of people that are liking the traditional car with the modern equivalent. Yeah, yeah. quality in Lexus is always pretty amazing, so um, there's no change in it with the electric car. Right, let's, let's take it for a spin. Right now, Brad, so looks like a traditional Lexus. I've yeah. owned a few Lexus vehicles over the years, so it looks like a traditional Lexus. We've got a power button, yep. so I assume we hit that, and everything seems vaguely familiar. A few extra little bits and pieces yeah. on the dash. Yeah, full digital dash in them. Yep. And so traditional gear lever? Yeah, so uh, this is probably one of the only main differences in the cabin from the traditional UX to the electric is uh, we changed to a different shifter from your right. traditional park neutral drive. Okay. Um, the shifter's out, actually taken out of the LC500 right. um, uh, coupe. And so it's just to the right and down. To the right and down. And we're in drive. And we're in drive, yeah. And handbrake automatically is off. Automatic, yep. Radio. And away we go. So let's see how it goes. And of course, the thing that's always impressive about electric vehicle is it's just so quiet. Yeah. Now, the Lexus hybrid vehicles have been nice in the past. They've been nice and quiet when they're moving off because they're obviously using that electric motor at low speed. Uh, you've got the heads up display, so that's a nice feature that Lexus have had in their vehicles for some time. Yeah. I assume that they've basically built in most of the specs that you would have in the higher end. Yeah, so vehicle. this particular one's sports luxury grade, so right. it basically emulates the UX 250H sports luxury grade. Right. So they've still got the three grades? Uh, in, the, in the 300E, just the two, luxury and sports luxury. Right. So the important things that everyone wants to know about, range, how's yeah. the range? 360 kilometres. Okay, now that's a real world range. Yeah. Right yep. And the size of the battery yep. in it? 54.3 kilowatts. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's a, a, a smaller battery than some of the other electric vehicles on the market. Yep. Presumably, putting some extra battery in, we could get a better range. Are yeah. there plans to do that at yeah, some Yeah, I, I think with some of the stuff that they're coming out with, there's there's definitely the room there for increased battery sizes. Yep. Um, UX is basically our, our toe in the water with full battery electric. Um, I think we'll see next year some pretty exciting things come out. So really where I would see this vehicle being used would be the town run around, yep. taking the kids to sport, dropping the kids off at school, doing the shopping. You don't really need a huge amount of range for yeah. that type of vehicle, whether it be in a regional place like Dubbo or in a big city, you're probably only doing 10, 20, 30 kilometres in a day, yeah. and every now and again, you might be doing a longer trip. Yeah. So recharge times, what sort of charger infrastructure has it got on the car itself? Yeah, so we've got AC and DC charging ports, one on each side. Okay. And what charges, for example, the NRMA chargers? Yep, so we, we use Catamo 
charging yeah. um, points for our DC chargers. Excellent. Right, yeah. So they're, they're a fairly common thing. Yeah. Uh, and again, those NRMA chargers have got that. So yeah. you've got access, good access to those around the place, even from here. You go to places like Canamble, yeah. you go to Coonabarabin, go down to Orange. So in Dubbo, obviously, there's good infrastructure there around yeah. those. Yeah. And so they've actually teamed up with Jet Charge. Okay. Um, so you actually get three years free charging at any Jet Charge station. Yeah, right. With the so vehicle as NRMA well. is free, Jet Charge is free. Yeah. So the running cost of these is incredibly cheap, yeah. Yeah, which is really important. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it feels nice. It feels like a Lexus. Yeah. It's got everything around that range. So people get excited about zero to 100 speed or acceleration times. Yeah. For some reason, people don't normally worry about that, but when it comes to electric vehicles, yeah. everyone wants to know how fast to 100. So yeah. what sort of... About 6.6 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Now, again, some electric vehicles do better than that, but at the same time, if you were buying a traditional vehicle, you'd go 6.6, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there is an obsession with it for some strange reason, but uh, that's, that's still a reasonable sort of time. Now, the I just noticed there on lift off the accelerator, it didn't seem to decelerate. Yep. It uses, I assume, regenerative Regenic, braking. Yep. Yep. Is there an option to change Absolutely, that? Absolutely, yeah. Right. So your little B selection there on the um, shifter. Okay. And there's actually four levels that you can change for the um, braking system. Right, so this might be a curly one to throw at you. If I change that now, when I get out and get back in, does it keep no, that? No, no, it'll go because it's all based off your shifter. Right. Okay. So if I want to play with that, if Just I move that the shifter, shifter straight down. Oh yeah. So if I want to shift it down, Just and the first level down. down is the highest no, level region. It, it auto starts at level three. Right. And okay. then when you shift it down, oh, yeah. so it that comes now. up on your display okay. there. Yep. And oh, then yeah. those levels are changed off your paddle shifters. Okay. Right. So you've got that there. Okay, right, so that reduces it, presumably, yeah. and that increases it. So if I go to maximum level, and then lift off. Yeah, so you can feel that, and obviously yeah. that's, that's doing a Lexus slash Toyota should be very good at that because the Prius that came out in 99, yeah. all the hybrid vehicles that you've had in the Lexus and the Toyota range have had that regenerative braking yeah. forever. Yeah. So if anyone knows how to do regen braking, it's, I'm guessing that Lexus and Toyota yeah. should be able to do it. We'll go along, we're doing about, uh, we'll get down to about 70 k's an hour here, and so if you're stuck behind a vehicle at this sort of speed and then accelerate, yeah, so you still feel like it's got enough acceleration yeah. there to quite easily get up and get around a vehicle, which sometimes people think electric vehicles haven't got that performance, yeah. but it's still got that nice performance that you expect to see. Yeah, Lexus actually really controlled the acceleration curve in it. Right. Um, talking to our technical advisors, they de- um, Detuned it four times so they could get the acceleration curve to a really smooth level. Yeah, right. And that's one of the things that's interesting. Some other vehicle manufacturers have put options in to actually drop back the acceleration because yeah. some people who bought the vehicles found it was too powerful yeah. for them. So that's a really important thing in the driving experience because it's got to appeal to a whole range of drivers. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, price is a critical factor. You mentioned there were two variants yep. in terms of the specs. So, what are the prices of those two? Yeah, so the UX 300E. Luxury starts at uh, eighty-three thousand on the road, right? And then the sports luxury is the one we're in here is just on ninety. Okay. Yeah. And the extra things in the sports luxury over the standard E? Yeah. So uh, you get things like um, the heads-up display, um, your heated steering wheel. Um, the, the hard thing is the luxury is very different to the standard luxury. Right. The luxury in this comes with heat and vent front seats, Mark Levinson audio. Um, so it's a very feature pack vehicle off the bat. Yeah, right. And they tend to do that because you're spending a lot of money on the battery. Yeah. They tend to actually put a few extra features in, which probably don't cost the manufacturer a lot, but add some nice features. Yeah. And probably change a bit of the ownership experience as well. So we've gone to five year warranty. Okay. Um, on the vehicle, um, up to 10 years warranty on the battery system. Um, you also get five years cap price servicing at $295. Right. So servicing wise, one great advantage of electric vehicles is lower levels of servicing. Yep. So what sort of servicing levels do you expect to see in something like this? Yeah, so it's talking to the techs, there's not a lot that they need to actually check out. Um, they will do a hybrid battery, uh, the electric vehicle battery check every service as well. Yep. Because once they get to five years, I'll actually extend the warranty every by 12 months every time they do a service on it, up yeah, to right. 10 years. Yeah, okay. uh, and the benefit of that is every year it's getting a, a battery check. Um, and then it's just general maintenance. Of, of tyres, brakes, um, suspension, etc. Yeah, right. Um, now, I did see an article recently that Lexus, in their Encore program, actually had the ability for electric vehicle owners or purchasers of one of the Lexus vehicles 
to actually borrow a petrol vehicle in the Lexus range if they needed to use it for up to eight days a year. Yeah. So is that part of the program? Yeah, for this? so with any UX electric, you also get, so what it's called is um, Lexus On Call Platinum. So one of the big advantages of that is you get Lexus On Demand. So you get to use this three times um, in the ownership experience, in the warranty period, sorry. Um, so you get to pick any vehicle in the range, basically at um, major capital cities. So let's say you're going on a holiday to Queensland, you fly into Brisbane, you've pre-booked your car, and it's basically any model in the range for up to eight days each time you, you use it. And so does that also allow the option to get past your range anxiety? Some people say to me when they think about an electric vehicle, oh no, I go to holidays in Queensland once a year, yep. it's going to be a hassle to drive a thousand kilometres when the range is only 360 kilometres. Yeah. So is that something you could do where you would actually go into a dealer here in Dubbo and say, I'd like to use that for eight days and take advantage of that program and take that car away on that long trip? 6th of January we're launching uh, Lexus on Demand in Dubbo, so that is definitely going to be um, something that can be done. Yeah. Uh, traditionally it's just capital cities, yep. um, they've just launched uh, Cairns, Dubbo and um, New Zealand. Right. So that's a really clever way to get around that range anxiety because it doesn't matter how much range you put in an electric vehicle, there's always going to be a time when you want to drive further yep. than that range. So if you take that program and say, well, this solves your problem that the once a year you might need longer range, yeah. you've got the ability to borrow another Lexus. Yeah. And that's obviously free of charge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, and you get to try another Lexus as well. Yeah. And now look, it's it's nice, and I think people who don't want to try some of the, the newer models that come on the market who feel more comfortable with a traditional brand or a brand that they have known in the past, I think they'll be very attracted to something like this because they can get into the electric market and still feel comfortable that they've got a local service centre and they've got a vehicle they know and they're familiar with because all the controls. If anyone's owned a Lexus or even a Toyota, the controls are all familiar. They yeah, feel similar. like they're just in a comfortable car. It just seems very quiet and obviously very cost effective to run and own. Caution, approaching railway crossing. And all the standard things you expect to hear <laughs> in, a, in a Lexus. Yeah. So how does that pricing compare to the traditional UX? Yeah, so uh, UX sports luxury uh, in a hybrid uh, two wheel drive is mid 60s. Right. On the road? Yep. So it's a little bit dearer. A little but bit dearer. again, for that experience and for being an early adopter, you're always expecting to pay just that little bit more money. Yeah. Where they've sort of jumped up in the price, they've sort of backed it up with your things like your Encore Platinum, uh, your free charge and your jet charge, your free installation of your wall charger at home. Yeah. And so it comes with a wall charger? Yep. Right. So do you know the typical charge time? Not that you normally run an electric vehicle to dead flat, yeah. but if it was dead flat, using that wall charger, that home wall charger? Yeah, so if you're using, uh, depending on obviously the power that's being pumped into it, if you're using just normal 240 volt, it's up to 24 hours, yep. sort of standard. Um, we've got a couple of the, the wall chargers installed at work, which if they're running it up to sort of seven kilowatts, um, it's about eight hours, eight, nine hours yep. at zero. And that's the important thing. It's, I find that sweet spot is if you can charge your electric vehicle up in eight hours, it just means you can plug it in overnight. Yeah. And that's what most people do that own an electric vehicle. They're not too stressed about, I want to plug it now and have it ready to go in five minutes. Yeah. It's convenient to come home, the battery's getting a bit flat after using it for a few days, a week, whatever it might be, and they want to just plug in and next morning and wait for the right to go again. Yeah. And I can see this being attractive to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And the future, for Lexus, this is the first model. First model, fully yeah. Fully electric. Yeah. The next Lexus that'll be out. What's um, we'll have uh, a plug, our first ever plug-in hybrid out in probably February. Okay. Good. Um, in the NX, uh, and then sometime in 2022, there's an all-new model, the RZ450E, coming out. So it's a larger model. Obviously. Larger model, yeah. Quite, yeah right. quite electric motor. Yep. And the plug-ins. I remember being in Japan years ago, and I saw plug-in hybrids everywhere. And I came back to Australia, and I remember talking to your dealership saying, why well, aren't those plug-in hybrids here in Australia? But yeah. they just weren't being brought into Australia, so it's good to see a plug-in hybrid. The details on it are pretty impressive. Yeah, It'll right. have a fuel consumption sticker of 1.3 litres per 100k. Yeah, right. um, we have the most full of pure electric range out of basically anything else in the market yep. um, from a plug-in hybrid, um, the biggest battery underneath it, and, yeah. and one of the quickest cars in our range. Yeah, right. So 
So availability, how many of these are you going to be able to get hold of? That's going to be a big issue, isn't it? Yeah, um, so there's not a huge amount of stock coming into the country in the first 12 months of it launching, um, but I'd probably estimate uh, an average wait time of three to six months, which is not extraordinary in, in this day and age. No, well, it's hard to get petrol vehicles in that yep. sort of time frame, really, isn't it, at the moment? There's yeah. so many chip shortages yeah. out there. Yeah. But they'll all ramp up, and I think manufacturers around the world are getting to the stage where they are ramping up yeah. production of, whether it be electric or just normal vehicles. Not sure if that's straight, but uh, that's yeah, pretty okay. close. Yeah. <laughs> Radio, and then just hit the your button, button. button yeah. Yep, radio. and that again puts the automatic electric brake, uh, automatic uh, handbrake on. Yep. Yeah. Radio, pa uh, power off. Yeah. Well, there we go. Radio, well, thanks very much for your time. No it's a very nice vehicle, and I can see there'll be a few of these. It's probably as many as you can get hold of. They'll be yeah. running around the streets of Dubbo very shortly, and in fact, around the streets of Australia. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive car. Mm. Very good. Thank you. Cool.